Hi there, I'm SR Coder and welcome back to part 6 of my ML API tutorial. In this one we're going to simply run through respawning. So in the last one we managed to get the health to go down when we were shot by the um, other players. Now we're just going to need to respawn and we'll probably, uh, probably continue on from there with maybe improving the menu. So uh, let's get straight to it. So we have this um, player health script that we were working on last time. <coughs> it worked with, uh, with this a network var so that we were able to um, this floating point network var so we were able to affect this now this uh, happens on the server if you remember from the uh, from the last one so we uh, we actually take damage on the server and because it's a network var it's synchronized down to all the clients and um, that happens uh, in the shooting script where we uh, run a server RPC to shoot. So what we're going to do is uh, we're just going to use this player health script and we're going to improve this so that we actually um, so we actually respawn. So uh, what we, the first thing we need to do is we're going to have to do some messaging. So um, uh, we're going to use ML API and then dot messaging. And this is the same system that we had in place in the player shooting. Uh, messaging in order that we can send um, server RPCs. In this one we're going to do a server RPC and a client RPC so we're going to see uh, both directions in action. Um, we need to make this a networked behavior in order for this to uh, for this to work. Um, I'm actually quite surprised I, I forgot to do that yet the uh, the system still worked. Um, the network VARs must be clever enough to realize that uh, or they don't entirely use this um, inherited mono behavior in order to work. So uh, what we'll do is we'll just um, write some comments in here. So we're just going to check the health t here to make sure that we're above zero or not. Um, remember that this, this is going to be running on the server because uh, I'll just remind myself uh, that this is running on the server because we can when we call it in player shooting it's a server RPC so it's run on the server. It's called by a client invoked by the client but runs on the server so it's important to keep in mind when we're doing these things so this this check health um, is going to happen on the server so uh, let's just do that so we'll do um, so if the health value health dot value is less than less than or equal to zero then we want to um, respawn most likely uh, so the respawn we should probably uh, make as a function. Um, and what we're gonna what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna run um, this as a client RPC. So uh, we'll create this right now. So we'll do this client RPC. Now the way the client RPCs work is that the server and this is going to be run on the server. The server would run a client RPC. So um, the client RPC would run on all connected clones of uh, of the object that runs it. So if this player happens to be, this player health script happens to be on Bob or Bob's version on the server, then um, on all connected Bobs, um, this method uh, will run when we invoke it on the server. So the client RPC, um, we'll just call it Reese on and we'll uh, it's just a void return type and we need to um, give it uh, I think we need to give it some parameters so I'm gonna give it a vector 3 um, position which will be the uh, position that we want to respawn at and we'll just as I said we'll keep it really simple we could give it position and rotation or a transform but just keep it as a really really simple uh, method um, and now in the respawn <coughs> itself, uh, we'll need to, I think we need to just, uh, so that remember this, this does run on the server. So when it runs on the server, it'll only run on one instance. Um, and then uh, we can pass that instance for the random position that we want down to all of the clients. So they all spawn in the same place rather than them all working out their own random position. Um, so yeah, we'll just get, we'll get onto this. So we'll make a, another vector three and we'll say uh, pause and we'll make it equal to and um, let's just generate a random one so uh, random dot range now let's use uh, 
minus 10 and 10 as the maximums and we'll maybe make it just up in the air <laughs> for no reason and then again random random dot range and then again minus 10 commit and this will this will generate just a, a random three-dimensional vector with uh, between somewhere between minus 10 and 10 on the x and minus 10 and 10 on the z and a height of four units up and then we'll pass that to the invoke so the way to do this uh, is you invoke client rpc um, and the best one is on on everyone um, this one uh, seems to be sort of one of the easier to use um, so you can pass the method and then you can pass in some extra information. You notice there's 66 overloaded um, <laughs> uh, methods with slightly different signatures. So uh, you can look this up in the um, in the documentation if you like, but you can just uh, trust me. So we can uh, we can run this respawn method, and uh, we can pretty much type in anything we want here. But all I, all I really need is this uh, this pause um, vector three that we that we created so the random vector 3 gets sent to it so when when the client runs it it will be this random vector that the server decided upon and all the rest of them get to do it so and um, this brings us to this respawn method so this client RPC is going to be run on the on the client clearly uh, there's a couple of things that we need to do in order to um, in order for this to work is we're just going to set effectively we're just going to reset the position um, and we'll do it really simple and then we'll maybe um, improve it a little bit so uh, the, the unfortunate thing is that the character controller um, we need to um, get that character controller because we need to disable it and then re-enable it again so I'm just going to do um, this get component character controller um, ideally I should cache this value in the start method but let's just do it here just so we keep it simple so we we get the character controller and call it CC and then we say CC dot enabled equals false so that we can disable it so that we can actually set the transform dot position um, of the player to the new position um, then we need to um, re-enable that again so CC enabled equals uh, true and um, let's take a quick look and see that that looks okay and then I'll pause the video and test it and see if it works so uh, yeah we've got the uh, respawn system in a simplest way working so in theory you, you shoot and then the player respawns instantly um, the, the thing that I clearly didn't do was um, I didn't reset the health back to um, the starter health so uh, every time you get hit the next time you're going to die so uh, we'll quickly um, stop playing this and go back to that it's a really simple change so um, clearly when we respawn um, we want to go back to what the starter health was ideally uh, that value right here um, should be stored as a public variable but let's just be lazy and uh, and set this here so we'll just say oops handheld that's weird so we'll just say health dot value and is equal to 100 and uh, in that way the, um, the health will go back to 100 every single time um, while we're here this uh, it's a bit weird to instantly jump to um, to the new position uh, it does work and you're welcome to leave it right there but I think what we should probably do is make this into a, a, a coroutine and then that way we can have a little bit of a delay in there and it's really simple to do so um, I'm going to make an I enumerator and I'm going to say uh, respawn yeah I'll call it respawn and uh, take a vector 3 uh, pause so it looks really similar to the other one but what we're actually going to do is we're going to change the name of this one so I'm going to change respawn so I'll call it um, I'll call it um, client client respawn and then obviously change up here client respawn so this invokes this uh, client RPC and what we're going to do is we're going to make this one invoke this this coroutine um, so I'm going to copy and paste this code control X to copy out control V to paste it in and in here we're just going to do um, start coroutine and then call it respawn coroutine and um, in the brackets we pass in position 
Uh, so this will this will initialize this this coroutine, this respawn coroutine, and because um, it's an I enumerator, it's complaining right now because it needs to it doesn't return anything. Um, and um, I changed this value. Maybe I'll just call this one position as well because why not? Um, so vector three position. So uh, we can we can we need to return something. So what we'll do is we'll think about the order of this. So um, it's okay to set this um, this value straight away, and then uh, this one straight away, and uh, disable the character controller. But um, maybe we should have a bit of a a delay after we um, or a delay here before we reset the position. And uh, we should probably make him invisible too. It would be quite cool. So um, I'm going to do a little, little bit of a delay. And you do that with um, inside of coroutines. You do that with uh, the yield statement. So uh, yield return new wait for seconds. And uh, this allows me to pass in a value. So if I wait for one second, um, it will pause execution. Then I'll do this and then I'll do this. And then the coroutine's finished. And it doesn't have to worry about it anymore. So um, to get the, what we could do is, yeah, let's do that. So we'll make it invisible as well, which would be kind of cool. So if we look back at our um, player here, the, um, double click, player, come on player, up you come. Oh, I'm in, yep, so I've got the player here. Um, the top level player we have, it doesn't have any meshes on it, but the, the next, we have a mesh here, and then we have a mesh here. So we need to get these meshes and effectively just switch them off like this. So they get the, re the renderer components and just switch them off so that it becomes invisible. Um, let's just quickly go to code and do that. So we'll do that inside of the start method, I believe. So let's go here and we'll make that start method. So I love, I love, um, I love Visual Studio because you can just do that. You don't have to remember it. Um, so public void start what we're going to do is uh, we'll create or cache a bunch of um, mesh renderers so uh, if I can spell correctly mesh renderer uh, mesh render array and we'll call it renderers and then in the start method we'll say renderers equals uh, get components in children get components what's the plural one get components in children um, of type mesh renderer. So this will just look through all of the um, all of the children of this game object and look for any components that are mesh renderers and store it in this array and um, this list of renderers. Um, that way down here what we should do is um, immediately disable all the renderers. So um, if we do a for each, um, for each renderer in renderers, then we are gonna say a renderer dot enabled equals false, and that will disable them. Um, not great practice to copy paste code, but effectively we're gonna do the opposite of this um, later on in the in the code. So. Um, we're going to disable all the renderers so we become invisible, reset the health, um, and then get the character. Oh, yeah, we could take uh, this line here as well. We could um, optimize. So let's take this out and we'll biff it in here and we'll do control V and um, we'll just uh, take this one out. So we'll just cache this value. So we'll say character controller CC and then in here we'll say CC equals so that we can get the component cached. Right, um, that way we can still call this cc.enabled. So we've made it invisible, we've uh, returned the health to normal, um, we already, we've disabled the character controller, um, then we're gonna uh, take this one, I think we'll, we'll um, set the position to the new position, then, then wait a second, before we enable the character controller and then make it visible again. So control C to copy this, control V to paste it in, and this time we're gonna make this uh, true. So yeah, um, fairly simple to do, and uh, hopefully you've understood that. And um, let's just quickly pause the video and test again. So um, 
I hope you don't mind me showing errors and uh, and showing out how to fix them as well. Um, but the uh, character controller move is uh, was called on an inactive controller. This is one of the errors, and the other one was was a really obvious one that I should have uh, should have picked up was this um, that the client was trying to write the health value uh, without permissions. And uh, as I mentioned before, that only the server can change those unless you uh, specifically define that the client can do that. Um, but in our code, if we quickly look at the code, um, what we're trying to do is effectively this respawn method, when we wrote it before, it works on the client. So um, this is actually running on the client, and the client can't change this value. Uh, but uh, all it really re involves to fix that is if we um, just take the where we reset the health, rather than reset the health um, on the client, and remember that this take damage runs on the server so all we'll do is we'll set this uh, here so we'll um, control V paste this in here so we, we reset the health value to uh, back to 100 um, here rather than um, trying to run on the client um, hopefully that, that made sense it makes uh, it's a kind of a obvious error that, that I made the, the last thing was the, um, the error that we saw was the character controller is trying to move because we didn't we didn't really disable the character controller um, so in that in those seconds when we're disabling the character controller um, the character controller is trying to move so w a couple of fixes for that one of them would be that um, that we can um, do the delay um, not have a delay between when we enable and disable the character controller so that it might you know it might fire once but it's not going to cause a big issue um, or we could disable the um, player movement script as well when we disable some of the other components either way is a good solution we'll try this one and see where it works so in theory what we're going to do is we're going to um, we're going to uh, disable the character controller move it re-enable the character controller um, almost instantly straight afterwards and then do our delay before we re-enable um, the other stuff. Now the, the negative of this is that um, we'll be able to move around um, for this one second, the player will be able to move around for this one second. Uh, if we were to put it here, um, what we could do is we could wait for a second after we're invisible and then do it. So yeah, let's try that. that makes can try it any way you want, but I think this one might make more sense if we um, if we make ourselves invisible so that the player knows that they've been sh so the other player knows that they have been killed, and then we wait for that one second, um, then we should move ourselves and then make ourselves visible again almost instantaneously. So again, I'll just pause this and test it and see if it works. So yep, yeah, um, when we uh, when we did those two changes, if I just run this one and host a game over here, I've kept the console up so we can see if there's any errors coming up. And then we'll run this one and join the game. You can see that all the errors, um, oh, that one's still maximized on play. Oh, I pushed it off. I did notice that this is like one of the issues is if the player um, is in the same spot as the other because they've got colliders, they end up pushing each other off. Um, believe it or not, giving them respawn points is actually slightly more uh, in depth than it than you'd expect. So maybe that might be my um, my next video. If I just run this one, I'll just check. I'll show you that it does work. Um, so obviously we can uh, run around now. I can shoot this guy. He disappears and then reappears in this random position. So um, you do get this lerping where you see because the networks. Uh, tries to move it from its last known position uh, smoothly to its next one and so what happens is you do get this sometimes you get this a few frames where it looks like it's shot off in a different direction but yeah there you go um hopefully you've enjoyed the series um i'm going to maybe do one more just on improving the menu a little bit so that we can connect across computers rather than just local host only um but yeah please like and subscribe i'm close to a thousand now so a few more subscribers would be awesome and uh, yeah, thank you for watching and stick with it.